Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, remembering Zachary Colley Moreno. He was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died in a Wisconsin plane crash a few weeks ago. We'll hear from his grandmother on how his legacy will live on. And we have a leading essay double feature today at 8 a.m. Speaking with city manager Eric Walsh, talking about how you can have your voice heard when it comes to making our city's budget. Then at 8.30 a.m., Southside Superintendent Rolando Ramirez joining us live just the day before students head back to school tomorrow morning. 81 degrees, it's going to be another triple digit day. Is there any hope in sight? Sarah Spivey will let us know in her forecast in just a bit. All right, good morning. Happy Sunday, 8 a.m. this Sunday. It is August 13th. Thank good you so morning. much for starting the morning with us. So we kind of just talked about it. It is back to school for so many students tomorrow morning. Right. For so many families, this is the last Sunday, and I, I gotta it's like say, the last hurrah. it's the last hurrah if you do want to go out and about, run the errands, have some family time. Do maybe that. Tax-free shopping. Tax-free shopping. Do it early, because Sarah, what were you saying? Afternoon, like noon to six, is just miserable. Yeah, a great, great forecast there, Max. It is miserable afternoon. We'll be up to 104 this afternoon. We do have some clouds out there right now. Take a look outside as we look off. You can see off in the distance there, We've got uh, the downtown San Antonio skyline and it is cloudy to start the day. It's 82 degrees, mostly cloudy south winds at about 10 miles per hour. Already feels like it's near 90 because humidity is at 82%. But later on today, that humidity will be coming down in the afternoon and skies will be clearing. We'll already see clearing here in the next couple of hours. 94 at noon, mostly sunny. 104 for the high temperature today. High fire danger. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now in the week ahead, we're going to be watching the ERCOT grid very carefully. There's a couple of days there where uh, the supply and the demand are going to come close to each other. I'll have a look at the state of the grid coming up in just a bit, and we'll talk about a scorcher of a week with only a very small rain chance. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A woman waking up in the hospital this morning after being shot at a gas station in downtown San Antonio. So take a look. This was the scene under Valero in the 900 block of West Hildebrand Avenue. Now, officers there are telling us they found the woman shot in the head and in the chest. She was rushed to a nearby hospital. At last check, still in critical condition. Police say the suspect is a man, but they don't have much more information. If you have any info that can help in the investigation, you're asked to call police immediately. Dozens of people released balloons with messages inside in honor of Zachary Cali Moreno yesterday. We first told you about Zach's story a few weeks ago. He was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died following a plane crash that happened in Wisconsin. His family says they hope they sent one final message to Zach with the balloon release yesterday. Want to let him know that his legacy will go on and his passion will go on as much as we can possibly do that for him. Right now on KSAT.com, we have details of a scholarship fund the commemorative Air Force in San, San Marcos has set up in Zach's name. All right, you have one last chance today to save a little extra cash before heading back to school. Sending your kids back to class. For every $100 you spend this weekend, you can save about $8 on qualified items like clothes, shoes, backpacks, school supplies. There's a full list of items that are not under tax-free weekend exemptions. We have that list. Everything you can and cannot save money on, just head to KSAT.com. And if you're heading out to get some of these deals, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange will be shut down today. The east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 will not be open. It's because road work will last there through tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. We have some alternate routes posted for you over on KZ.com. Just sign up for push alerts on our KSF app so you never miss a traffic update. All right, the city of San Antonio expected to grow our budget to $3.7 billion this year. It seems like a lot because it is. It is a 9% increase from last year's budget. So joining us in today's leading essay segment to explain how the budget gets formed is city manager Eric Walsh. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so, so much of this time we focus in on key issues, which we will get to, but let's start big picture. What are the, the first steps in forming our city's budget? What do those steps look like? So the, the, the first step, there's a couple of them. Uh, you know, the, the council 
generally in the springtime comes together and, and develops kind of from their perspective as a group what our major priorities are that need to be addressed. Um, and, and so we go through that. And then uh, this year we did something a little bit different. We hired a, an independent company to come in and do a statistically valid survey of residents uh, to give us an additional layer of, of input. And, and, and Max, I'll tell you that it was very consistent with what the council said. It, that gives me a great framework to, to work over the summer to put together that, that proposed uh, document. So there is a proposed budget out there, 9% larger than last year. So where does that extra money come from? So a, a lot of it, most of that is coming from our construction side. Um, a lot of capital investment. Um, those are all included with our voter approved bond program. Um, and, and those are projects and funding that we already had in place um, based on debt issuances. So um, that's the majority of it. There's a, a, we're seeing a 6% increase in our general revenue and about a 5% increase in our general expenses for next year. So now we can dive into the nitty gritty. The proposed San Antonio mm -hmm. Police Department budget comes in at $570.6 million. That's a 7.8% increase. You know, why the, the big jump in budget and what hopes to be done? So we, uh, we're, we're proposing that 105 police officer positions, uh, the, the most we've ever had in any one year. Um, the, 100 of those will go into patrol uh, to um, improve staffing, uh, primarily to increase our visibility and give officers a little bit of breathing room uh, so that they're not running from call to call on some shifts. Our, our uh, long-term three-year plan is to add 360. And so um, uh, this is the first year of that, of that effort um, those five, the, the other five that we're adding, we're, we're looking to expand um, capacity and throughput uh, out at the police academy. Right now, over the last five years, um, on a normal basis, we're graduating about 105, 159, 160 cadets, and, and we're hoping to push that up to 235 uh, beginning next year. So, you know, huge investment. It's one of the primary uh, responsibilities of any municipality is uh, public safety and and we want to make sure that we've got the the resources out there to continue to grow or continue to address a growing community i mean we're, we're continuing to grow and and um uh, we get two million 911 calls a year and eric over the last year it seems like animal care services have had to respond to a number growing of calls as well so that's addressed in the budget with a 26 percent increase in funds but do you think that's enough well, it's not, um, and and part of what I laid out to the council last week is that we're going to have to incrementally increase funding in, in in those areas over the next three years. Um, the three the three big areas of ACS that are in the proposed budget is uh, increased enforcement, uh, increased uh, uh, funding set aside to work with our rescue partners to to uh, keep our live release rate out of our facility high. Um, and then third is uh, beefing up our funding for spay neuter. In, in, uh, you've got to be able to do all three at once to really make an impact. And uh, I think I think fiscal year 24 is a good starting point. 26% it, it, is a large increase, um, but there are, um, you know, I shared with the council last week. We we get 50,000 311 calls for uh, aggressive dogs. Uh, neglect or cruelty, and uh, we don't have the resources currently to respond to all those. We, we respond to 44% of those calls. And so having the resources and planning for them um, and uh, uh, is, is critical. It, it is the only city service where you may call 301 and, and six times out of 10, uh, right now you're not going to get a response. And and from my perspective, it's unacceptable. So, the, so what we laid out to council last week was a plan to to get there uh, over three years, and and uh, you know we're we're launching off into the the council process part of this uh, process where we'll have detailed work sessions and a lot of community input. All right, we're running out of time, but I want you to answer these last two questions. So I'm going to bring them into one big question. You mentioned it a, a couple questions ago. Our city is growing. We're seeing it growing upward and outward. 
How does the city address that growing infrastructure? You talked about the additional public safety requirements, but what about our roads? You know, what about CPS, sewer lines? We are growing. And then, last question for you, I know we're throwing it into one. How can people have their voices heard in finalizing this budget? All right, let me hit the last question first. So beginning next week, over the next two weeks, we've got budget town halls uh, uh, in every city district and uh, the available, the dates and times and locations are available there online. Uh, please participate, it's key. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and let us know what you think. Uh, we'll take all that feedback back to council. Um, how we plan for that, Max, you have to plan for it, right? Uh, both from a, uh, a financial standpoint, but also from an execution standpoint. The, the work we're doing uh, out at the airport and the new expansion, uh, the implementation of the 2022 bond, um, making sure that we are laying the work out um, over the next three to five years that needs to be done, because we can't do it all in one year. Uh, but more importantly, making sure we have the resources and we're making the smart financial decisions as a city to be able to, to uh, continue to afford and be thoughtful about how we spend that money. Uh, it, it is, it is uh, the balancing act is doing that from a growing community, but then also maintaining what we have. Um, and um, we're, uh, uh, we just got, the, the city just got uh, uh, reaffirmed as a, a AAA bond rating um uh, city, uh, one of the largest cities in the in the country with the best bond rating, and um, you know we'll continue to do that. Um, it's but you've got a plan, just like you would your household budget. So, okay, well, San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh, thank you so much for taking your time to join us this morning and break down the budget for our viewers. You can catch this interview in full later on ksat.com. All right, time now, 812, 81 degrees. School is back in session for some, but that doesn't mean the hot weather is packing up the pools. We'll tell you some exciting news from San Antonio's Park and Recreation. And a quick live look out of the Alamo City, 81 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Morning and welcome back. So it's no secret, it's hot. Yeah. Here's another... Thing that's not a secret. Heat's not going away right now. <laughs> so San Antonio Parks and Rec extending their pool season for at least another month. Nine pools remaining open on weekends until September 24th. Two of those will be open for those needing to cool off during the week for fullest locations. Just head to ksat.com. The article should be on the homepage. So Sarah Spivey, I gotta say, is September 24th even long enough? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I think it will be because okay. it's eventually going to be fall. And but we're stuck in this weather pattern for at least the next seven days, guys. Mm. It's hard for me to see an end definitively of the triple digit weather. And you can see that today it's going to be hot. The white numbers here are the forecast highs. The yellow numbers are the records. I think we'll be shy of a record here in San Antonio by two degrees. We're still going to be hot though, 104. And as you can see, most of the state of Texas going to be above 100 degrees. We're going to be watching the ERCOT grid very carefully. Today and tomorrow, supply should meet demand no problem. But at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, the supply is going to come close to the demand. The supply being the blue line here and the demand being the red bar. You can see at 7 p.m., once we start to lose the solar uh, energy for the day, uh, there's still a high demand at 7 p.m. because it's so hot. So we'll watch very carefully Tuesday uh, for that. For now, though, ERCOT does not expect any disruption in service or anything like that. Now on Tuesday, there is going to be a weather pattern change for parts of Texas. Notice that the future cast shows that heat high still maintaining strength around San Antonio. It's going to be 105 tomorrow, but tomorrow in North Texas, temperatures are going to fall below 100 degrees. Even in the panhandle, it's only going to be in the 80s. That's because a weak cool front will be moving through North Texas tomorrow. It'll bring an opportunity for rain in Waco and parts of Central Texas, maybe even an ice isolated shower as far as northern Kerr County tomorrow in the evening hours, but it's still going to be hot here in San Antonio and the catches. This front is going to fall apart as it moves through San Antonio. It's not going to have any cooler weather with it. It will, however, bring in some drier air from the north. All that's going to do is increase our fire danger on Tuesday, so it's still going to be hot 104 degrees on Tuesday behind that weakening front, and there could be one or two isolated showers. We're only talking about a 10% chance on Tuesday. That chance is there and it's a little bit different of a weather pattern, but 
the big story is the heat is still going to continue as that heat high builds back in from the west. Most of next week is going to be anywhere from 103 to 106, including Thursday when we'll be at 106 here in San Antonio, 110 in Del Rio. Bottom line, very small chance for shower on Tuesday. Otherwise, the big time heat continues for the next seven days. I am hopeful that this time next weekend we will have a weather pattern change for you in the week ahead. But for this upcoming week, it is more of the same, my friends. High fire danger and high heat. 82 degrees outside right now. Some clouds this morning. We got up to 105 yesterday. With clouds sticking around for another couple of hours, we'll be at 104 today. So still hot. 82 in Del Rio. 79 increases springs. Good morning in Kerrville, where it's 78. 81 in New Braunfels. It's uh, 81 in Gonzales, 83 in Castroville, 80 in Rio Medina, and 78 in Bandera. Look at this KSAT 12 hour forecast for you. Clearing skies by 11. We're already going to be at 90 degrees, 94 at noon, sunny in the afternoon, 100 by 2, and then in the later afternoon hours, 104 for the high temperature, still 99 degrees by 8 p.m. Reminder that fire danger is high today. High fire danger no campfires or burn piles, please. Avoid using tools that create sparks. It's the weekend. Some folks like to do yard work, but try to avoid using chainsaws. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains and do not park your car on grass. Otherwise, again, this is the, the forecast high for the day today. 102 Kerrville, 106 Del Rio, 102. 8 Catula, 105 Pleasanton, 103 Canyon Lake, 104 in Gonzales. And look at the forecast over the next several days. Again, a bit of a depressing forecast for us. There is that slim, a sliver of a chance of rain on Tuesday. By Saturday, we'll have our 54th 100 degree day. Oh, yeah, with that news, we'll send you to break and we'll be right back with more news. <laughs> The Spurs Holy Trinity are all finally in the Hall of Fame together after Tony Parker was inducted this weekend. Other Spurs members added to the Hall of Fame this year. Oh, we also saw Pau Gasol, Becky Hammond, Shouts, and of course, head coach Greg Popovich. Mark, the first time a coach and player inducted together. So Tony Parker, presented by his Hall of Fame teammates, Monty Ginobili and Tim Duncan, puts a smile on my face just thinking about them all. So Pop presented the big three and... Of course, David Robinson. Becky Hammond there to be inducted as a WNBA legend. But when you're also the assistant head coach for the Spurs for eight years, you still are a Spur to San Antonio. Okay, so from the Spurs to the Cowboys. Cowboys young studs put on a show in Dallas preseason debut, taking on Jacksonville. Rookie running back Deuce Vaughn standing a solid five foot five, making plays, racking up 56 yards along with touchdown. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Cowboys did not win. Mm. It's preseason, so it really doesn't matter. We got to see some of the, the cool highlights. We got to, you know, see some of the depth. Uh, Cooper Rush looked great. But Cowboys lost to the Jaguars 28-23. Next up, Cowboys in Seattle this Saturday at 9 p.m. In some better preseason opener news, Buffalo Bills' DeMar Hamlin played in his first preseason game yesterday. So we reported back in January about when he went into cardiac arrest that month. Now Hamlin made three tackles during the home game, taken on the Indianapolis Colts. Doctors cleared Hamlin to resume football activities back in April. He's made steady progress, rejoining his teammates during the preseason. And I want to go back to the Spurs for a second because it was cool. Uh, obviously, Tony did a bunch of interviews. Yeah. And they asked him, you know, which was your favorite finals that you won? And you'd think it would be the finals that he won finals MVP. But he actually said 2014 was his favorite okay. finals because they came off the 2013 devastating Ray Allen shot. Mm. So 2014, he was like, we need to remind the world that we are back. And he's like, if you look at the passing and the team camaraderie from that year, it was unmatched across the league. Well, hopefully it can be matched this season. Look at you. Wemby's back. All right, time now, <laughs> 826, 82 degrees. Okay, don't go anywhere. That's right. Southside Superintendent Rolando Ramirez is joining us live in the next half hour. We're going to be talking about what students and families should expect first day of school tomorrow, plus the district on the rise. We're going to explain in just a few moments. 
Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sunday mornings and actually, you know, s Saturday mornings, I like to like have a slow start and mm. stuff, but because of the heat, I just always feel rushed to get out the door okay. to get like the day started and get everything I have to do outside done early. So I feel like there's no lazy summer morning, Sarah, because these triple digits, they're dangerous. Yeah, they are, especially in the afternoon when it is the hottest. And today we're going to be up to 104. In addition to the heat safety, I'd like to remind you of fire safety too. Red flag warning in effect today for all the counties you see here in pink, although all of us around South Central Texas should be careful as uh, there's a lot of dry vegetation out there. We just haven't seen any rain over the last several days. It's 82 degrees as we start our day here in San Antonio. There are some clouds out there right now. 78 in Bandera. Good morning in Kerrville. We're at 78 degrees, 80 in Bulverde, 81 in Hondo, 80 at Stinson, 79 in Yavaldi, and 82 in Gonzales. We're going to quickly warm with clearing skies. Some clouds out there right now, but by noon it's going to be mostly sunny in 94, 104 for the high temperature today. Southeast winds at 10 to 15. Again, a breeze uh, contributing to the high fire danger this afternoon. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about a very slim chance for rain. And yesterday, we had our ninth record setting day in a row. Impressive to see this kind of heat. Will we hit the record today? I'll have the details on what the record is for this Sunday coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. ABC is reporting that as of now, 93 people have died from the wildfires in Maui, making it the deadliest wildfire in the United States in the last 100 years. More than 2,200 structures are destroyed with 85% of those being residential and more than 2,100 acres are burned. FEMA says the cost to rebuild is estimating at $5.5 billion. The cause of the fire is still not known at this time, but residents are puzzled and angered over the lack of warnings. And those residents, those families, giving ABC an inside look of what it feels like in those harrowing moments when the fires were just starting. ABC's Gio Benitez shows us how volunteers now stepping out and trying to help. This morning, communities trying to recover in the wake of the deadliest U.S. wildfire in a century. Overnight, that grim reality from officials. At least 93 lives lost since the devastating inferno broke out on Tuesday. Now, we were here just two days ago and the number was smaller and it's going to continue to rise. We want to... FEMA saying the fire damaged more than 2,200 structures and burned through more than 2,100 acres. The devastation is so complete that you see metals twisted in ways that you can't imagine. And you see nothing uh, from organic structures left whatsoever. The agency deploying more than 150 workers to the island to assist in recovery efforts. Across Maui, people sharing harrowing tales of survival. Annalise Cochran was able to escape the fire by jumping into the ocean, telling me she was clinging to a wall for more than seven hours. So how did you survive? I climbed over the seawall into the ocean, and while um, the fire was happening and the cars were exploding, uh, we would duck into the water and we would put our mouths as close to the surface as we could so that we could breathe. And now, anger is directed at the local government. Residents saying they were not given enough warning. Our Melissa Don catching up with people outside Lahaina who were having trouble returning to their homes. I saw no management of the situation whatsoever. There was one police car with like the little blue lights flashing. Nothing about there's a fire, evacuate, get out. No fire trucks. I never saw a drop of water going through. There was no alert that went off, no alarm, uh, no text that was telling us that we needed to evacuate. I was with my neighbors outside watching smoke billowing at 80 miles an hour over my apartment. And that's when we saw flames about one block away, kind of catty corner across. A you got no wall. warning at all. Absolutely no warning. Authorities responding overnight saying that the speed and intensity of the flames complicated efforts to warn citizens. There were multiple fires at the same time and the circumstance was greatly complicated also by the heat and the speed with which the fire spread, destroying a great deal of infrastructure. Over time, we'll be able to figure out if we could have better protected people. 
That was ABC's Geo Bonitas reporting and Maui Maui Kids over on Stone Oak Parkway is offering to help the San Antonio community with donations towards the American Red Cross of Hawaii. So if you'd like to make a donation, you can take it by their location. They are on the intersection of Stone Oak Parkway and Hebner Road. Well, back here at home, students all across San Antonio, some back in the classroom, some headed back to the class tomorrow, Alma Heights, East Central, Harlandale, Lackland, Northeast, Southside ISD, Uvalde CISD, all starting tomorrow morning, SAISD and Shirt Civil Universal City. They begin on Tuesday, Floresville, Judson and Randolph Field ISD beginning on Wednesday. So obviously a huge week for so many families. We have a full list of all the back to school dates that you need to know. Head to KSAT.com. But speaking of Southside ISD, it is a district we have been talking about a lot recently. It's a district on the rise, not only a rise in buildings, businesses, and rise in population, but also a rise in academic accolades. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Southside ISD Superintendent Rolando Ramirez. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. On behalf of Southside ISD, thank you for having me. So, Superintendent, we just talked about it district on the rise. You know, what does enrollment look like? And uh, speaking of on the rise, you know, does that pertain to the long-term future of Southside ISD? The enrollment looks fantastic. Last year, we had uh, more than 450 students than we had the previous year. This year already, before the start of the school year, we have 200 more students than what we ended this past year. Uh, the demographic study that, that was done this year shows potentially 17,000 uh, homes being built in our area. So this increase in enrollment uh, is, is embraced by our school district. It's welcome. We want you know, our students to know that Southside is the choice when it comes to deciding which school district to attend. So talking about the district growth, what has the recent academic performance been? So this past year, we had a, a district rating of an 88. Uh, for this year, the uh, accountability ratings won't be released by the state until September. But by doing the, uh, the comparison from this year's results to the previous year's results, and even though this year's test, there's been added rigor with the embedded writing and science, social studies and reading, the new item types, uh, that have been part of the this assessment. It's no longer just a multiple multiple choice test, and we have improved in every subject, every uh, grade level in comparison to the previous year. So we've been talking about teacher recruitment. Obviously, it's been tough around the country. How are y'all able to maintain your recruitment and retain talent? We, we truly value uh, our employees, and we've always said that we should pay uh, our employees' weight in gold. Southside has the highest starting teacher pay than any uh, school district in San Antonio, and it ranks in the top three uh, highest paid positions from custodial uh, workers, bus drivers, paraprofessional, our technicians. So we feel that you know, we have very high expectations and that you know, our staff uh, should be paid accordingly. And I think that helps with the recruiting efforts and the retention of our staff. Okay, so the first day of school is tomorrow. What are you most excited for and what should parents and students know? We are so excited to see our students back. It's already been a month and a half since we've seen the students who attended summer school. We have seen some of our, our students uh, that participate in the fine arts and, and the athletics already, but tomorrow we get to see all of our students and uh, the ones who are returning and the ones who are new to the district. Uh, so we're excited for that. And this year's theme is the A-Team. Together, everyone achieves more. And it's a collective effort from our students, staff, and community to reach that A and open up all the opportunities for, for our students. So working together as a team, we're going to try to reach that A this year. All right, so we, we have a little extra time, so I'm going to throw one more question at you. Yesterday, we had a photographer, Santiago, on the scene of the new nursing program on Southside ISD's campus. You know, what does that mean for the Southside ISD community, all the new families living there, and the students who get to see these brand new facilities right on their front door? 
Okay, it looks like we lost the superintendent. We lost signal. But if you are interested in learning more about that story or hearing more from the interview, you can check it out right now. Just head to ksnap.com. Time is just about 840, 82 degrees. Okay, stick around. We're going to take a look at some trending topics on ksnap.com, including a pop-up Alice in Wonderland bar. Oh, what do you think it? Cheshire. Did I say that right? I don't know. Cheshire I was going to make a Mad Hatter joke. Cheshire? But Chesh what? Cheshire? Sure, we'll go with that. Sure, sure. You know, I don't know about that, but I do know about this. It is 82 <laughs> degrees already. It is humid out there. It is not going to get any cooler. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. Coming up on this week, we'll sort through the legal chaos overshadowing the 2024 presidential race with a new special counsel on the Hunter Biden investigation just announced and another indictment of Donald Trump expected in the coming days. We'll speak to Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie and Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin this morning. All that plus the powerhouse roundtable coming up on this week. Hey, trending now on KSAT.com. Are you in the Hollywood, Hollywood, hollo, well, Are you Halloween okay? <laughs> spirit? It's just so hot. It was hard to say Halloween. Uh, well, here's some good news spirit. Halloween stores, of course, they're ready to pop up all over San Antonio. Head to KSAT.com to see if a location near you is already open. And don't forget to grab some Halloween party supplies while you're there. All right, speaking of Halloween plans, put on your calendar right now, Alice in Wonderland pop-up bar happening October 19th. Yeah, put it in the calendar because odds are we're going to forget. It's going <laughs> October 19th through November 16th at Alamo Plaza. A 90-minute topsy-turvy immersive journey. Your ticket gets you three Wonderland-themed drinks. Interesting. Three yeah, drinks. I know, right? The opportunity to make your own drink with the Mad Hatter. Okay. Okay, but if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to summer, yet I'm ready. There's a long list of ideas for fun ways to spend time indoors, from the aquarium to adventure parks. There's some perfect ways to celebrate the last few days of summer break. Also things like the Duseum, Woody Museum, and we're not able to say goodbye to the summer heat anytime soon, Sarah. No, we are not. You know, technically last year in 2009 and 2011 have more 100 degree days than this summer, but we have had hotter heat. Mm. So take a look at San Antonio's record heat streak. So yesterday we got up to 105, which is the ninth day in a row that we have seen uh, records broken or tied at the San Antonio International Airport. Impressively hot since Oct August 4th. Rather, we have seen a record high or tied a record high in San Antonio. And today is going to be hard for us to get to the record. All right. Today we'll, we're forecasting 104, uh, but the the record is 106 uh, set back in 1962, so it'll be difficult for us to get there, uh, but a few degrees shy. But in the coming days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we're likely to see a record or beat a record. So we'll continue with the record challenging heat in the week ahead. It is going to be hot and a lot of people have been saying, well, Sarah, don't you have any good news for me? Can't you just say it's going to get cooler in the next seven to ten days? Well, honestly, it is hard for us to say with any confidence that even after the seven day period, we're going to see a cool down. Unfortunately, 82 degrees outside right now, some clouds out there that's going to shave off a couple of degrees from the high, but it's still going to be hot winds are from the south South at 10 miles per hour outside right now. Some clouds early this morning, 75 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 79 degrees, 84 in Pleasanton. Let's take a closer look around San Antonio, 81 at Port SA, 81 JBSA Randolph, 83 in New Braunfels and 84 in Castroville. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, quickly seeing skies clear around noon. It's going to be 94 degrees and mostly sunny. We'll already be at 100 by 2 p.m. And then in the afternoon, 104 for the high high fire danger, particularly in the afternoon when we have lower humidity, a hotter temperatures and winds are going to be from the south southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze too. 
Please use caution today. Try not to create or spread grass fires. 106 in Del Rio, 108 in Catula, 103 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville. A little bit closer to the San Antonio metro area, 105 in Floresville, 105 in Seguin, 105 in Castroville, 101 in Bernie, 101 in Bulverde, 102 in Kerrville. And the weather setup, you can see that there's a good portion of the nation that's dealing with some showers and storms this morning across the central plains. If only we would be that lucky. We are staying under the influence of this heat high. You know, the heat high it settles over Texas every single summer. It's not unusual. What is unusual is that this one has been particularly strong and we have not seen any relief over the last several days. Now tomorrow we'll be at 105 in San Antonio. There is going to be a slight weather pattern shift for parts of Texas. North Texas will be cooler on Monday below 100 degrees all behind a very weak cool front. This cool front will bring some rain to areas in central Texas, but the catch is the front is going to fall apart as it moves through San Antonio, bringing only drier air in from the north and so fire danger will be pretty high on Tuesday. It's still going to be hot near 104. There is a small 10% chance that you could see an isolated shower from that front, but generally it's going to continue to be hot as that heat high will redevelop and strengthen over Texas. We'll be at 106 on Thursday and again this week hard to find any relief in the forecast. Saturday will be our 54th 100 degree day. Again, I am hoping for a weather change next week, but that's all I can do right now is hope. That's all we can do. I can't give you any reassurances that next week is going to be any cooler than this week. Eventually it will cool down at one point. Eventually. I mean, we're already <laughs> talking about Halloween, the spirit yeah. store. Let's just stay so. in the spirit yeah, yeah. of the spirit Halloween. That sounds like a good yeah. plan. And you can drink some spirits at the, uh, oh my God, the pop-up shop. Three drinks? That's three drink, yeah. mm. I'm just saying. Things are getting... Get your ticket at ksat.com. <laughs> All right, time now is 8.50, 82 degrees. Okay, you heard from Southside ISD Superintendent today, but tomorrow in GMSA, it, it's a full Southside ISD takeover. That's right. I'm going to be out there joining all the kids and all the teachers from Southside High School, Menchaca Early Childhood Center. We're going to be talking about the district strategy to tackle the nationwide, seemingly nationwide teacher shortage. And we're going to be checking in, making sure schools are ready for the new school year. You're not going to miss it. Well, we just got the pollen count in. Molds are low at 450. This is very, very uh, expected because it's been so dry that the only allergen out there is molds and even molds are low. 10 a.m. We're going to be at 86 and clearing out there. It's a little cloudy right now. 94 at noon and mostly sunny. 104 for the high. Breezy winds from the south southeast 10 to 15 contributing to high fire danger, especially in the afternoon and then just adding up with the triple digits over the next several days. We're going to be at or near 105 each day with only the slimmest chances for an isolated shower on Tuesday. All right. I'm not going to lie to you, Sarah. This is what I've been waiting for. He's been talking all about this all morning. This is one of my favorite things to do each and every year. These are the 10 finalists for the Te State Fair of Texas for the foods for the Big Tex Choice Awards. Came out this week. So the food items, are, I'm salivating even reading the list. <laughs> Food items, they're creative, they're unconventional, and they're almost all deep fried. Okay, let's talk about savory. First off is the deep fried cheesy crab tater bites. Eh, let's go. Might be a little too much. This deep fried pho, though, if mm, y'all can pho, scroll down. Pho, yeah. Pho, look, that looks amazing. That does look amazing. I'm not sold on this. So there's loaded fries pizza. So basically it's like cheese fries with bacon on, mm. on top of pizza. It's I'm basic. Not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not about that one. This one is... It's oxalant. It's ox. Soul, soul roll. It's uh, beef oxtails. Savory. I mean, it's in the description. Delicious. And let's just skip to the desserts because we only have 45 seconds left in the show. This Look Biscoff Delight. Oh, yeah. Looks delightful. Yes. It, well done. Mm -hmm. I see what you did there. Uh, and then, come on, the bourbon, banana, caramel, Can, sopa pias. I mean, it's picturesque. I put this on a wall somewhere. This is beautiful. <laughs> okay, but I am such a cherry pie girl. And you the, literally said, you're like, I love cherry I, pie. It's like my favorite dessert. So this Fernie's fried cherry pie in the sky. Ugh. I think we need to take a GMSA weekend trip to the state fair. Let's go. And do a taste test. I agree. Hey, have a great rest of your day. Y'all have a good Sunday.